The thing about Crossy is every week you go out with him, even training, games, whatever it is, you just know you're going to get 100% effort. Um, he leaves absolutely nothing else out there. Um, he, he will just, he will die for the club, he will die for his players, he will do absolutely anything for that win, um, anything for his mates. Um, he's just a ripper bloke to, to be alongside. First impressions, um, I just saw a guy who just wanted to work his butt off to, to get better and um, you know, this is a real loyal sort of guy who just, um, yeah, as I said, he just wanted to just work hard and get the most out of himself and, and he's continued to do that for 200 games. Well, I think as players, you know, you, you never know your limits and to, to have him that far up the front, um, you know, it's kind of a visual of maybe where you should be or where you could possibly be if you work just as hard as, as he does. You see young guys come into the club now and they do exactly what I was doing when he, uh, looking up to Crossy. They still look up to him, you know, 12, 13 years down the track. Um, you know, he's still the one setting the setting the standard and, and raising the bar in terms of, you know, what's required to be an AFL player and the standard that you have to train at. And um, I think as long as he's a, an AFL player, that's the sort of standard he'll set. And, and that's a great thing to, for young kids to look up to. The way he goes about it, his professionalism, he, the way that he just gets the most out of his body that he can, um, you know, he, he'll never die wondering. As I said, when I first came to the club, I, it, it's funny when I get asked a lot about, um, you know, who's had the most influence on your career or who's impacted you the most. And, and I always just go back to Daniel Cross. He's, he's a bloke who's had the most impact on me uh, from a career perspective and a playing perspective because when I got to the club it was um, I looked up to him and he just worked hard and I saw what he did and I just wanted to do what he was doing to to get the most out of myself and I guess over the journey it's been it's been funny that um, we've become such good mates because early on we were competing for spots and uh, you know it was either me or him playing and, that, and that's just how it was back in the day but uh, over, the, over, the, over the time together we've just formed a really good friendship and uh, I think um, the competitiveness of both of us has, has helped both our careers. Crossy will put himself in places where other people would be too scared to go. Um, he does some things out there that people just can't believe that he, that he, that he does and what he puts his body through. And, but he gets up, he'll, he'll um, bounce back up and do it again and again and again and nothing will stop him. A maniac really. He's, um, he just puts himself on the line to the point where you think if he actually has any concern for himself at all, which I don't, I'm still convinced he doesn't, um, which is great. Like you know, you know where he's going to be and what he's going to do, and that's the standard that you have to kind of meet if you want to play with him. So it kind of brings everyone else up. No, it's just the way he plays. He, he's instinctive, and everything he does on the field is just through instincts. Um, you know, he'll he'll go back, as you said, he'll he'll sit back in the hole in front of Jonathan Brown, and he won't even flinch. You know, because that's what uh, that's what his teammates love and. That's what his team asked him to do, and, and whatever his team asked him to do, that's what he does. And I mean, that's why we love him as a as a teammate because he always puts the team in front of in front of himself. And if that means that he's going to get hurt, then then that's the sacrifice he's willing to take for for this footy club.